Serious. What do you think is the creepiest, most disturbing, unsolved mystery ever? Part 2. Now just relax and enjoy. Also, if you like, please subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. When I was 14, I lived in a very rural area. The neighborhood kids were all friends and they used to do some fucked up things. They definitely tried to derail a train. They also used to put debris and other things in the middle of the highway to try and cause accidents. One time a couple hit a tree branch that they had placed in the road. When the couple stopped, the kids threw rocks at them. Rural kids with dysfunctional family life. Account 2. The yogurt shop murders that took place in Austin, Texas in late 1991. It's been the subject of a couple episodes on 48 Hours, and a book devoted to the case was published around five years ago, Who Killed These Girls, by Beverly Lowry. Account 3. In 1969, a student was killed in the stacks of the library at my old college, 8 Penn State, and was found with a singular stab wound on her chest. It wasn't even late or anything. And while there were many suspects, no one was ever arrested for it. It's insane how someone could kill a person in broad daylight at a major university and get away with it. It's not really anything super crazy. In comparison to other stories here, it's just weird to me personally because I would always study there and I didn't find out about it until after I graduated. Account 4 the murder of the Swedish Prime Minister Olaf Palme, he was killed over 30 years ago, and no one have found the murder. Account 5. For me, the Tylenol poisonings are just off-putting with how easy it was, how widespread the poisonings were, how the guy was never caught, and the lost, lasting impact of the incident. Account 6. In the early 80s, all within 18 months of each other, three paper boys in the Des Moines, IA area all went missing during their morning route. The cases have never been solved. There are theories ranging from a pedophilia ring, an ex-employee who was a creeper kidnapping them, and even a lone wolf type situation. It's a bizarre case that has baffled Iowa for years. Account 7. The Setagaya family murder. Late on the night of December 30th, 2000, in Setagaya, Tokyo, a man broke into the house of a family of four, strangled the son in his bed, stabbed the father, and brutally killed the mother and daughter. The killer then spent hours in the house eating their food, using their toilet, and going through their paperwork like he owned the place, and eventually left, never to be found since. Account 8. Honestly, the Cape Intruder isn't disturbing, just weird as hell. During the night in Cape, Maine, in like 2005, people who kept their doors unlocked would wake up to find a man staring at them and he would quickly flee. No people were ever injured and nothing was ever stolen. They just watched people sleep, apparently. Account 9. The Disappearance of the Beaumont Children The Beaumont children are siblings who disappeared in 1966. There are still to this day investigations on going to try and find the remains of these children. There have been foundations of sheds and houses dug up. The children have never been found and the suspects has never been identified. Account 10. The West Mesa Bone Collector, the bones of dozens of women were found at a construction site. No other clues. Account 11. My great-great-grandma got on a train in her town in NC to go up a few towns to go shopping. I think it was in the 1920 I's S. Never came back. Family had no clue what happened. Husband wasn't abusive or negligent so far as I know. Kids were good. They just assumed she started a new life despite not taking anything with her, and left her to it after a reasonable period of time trying to find her with what passed for detective work at the time. Serial killers have always been around. It's just significantly harder to operate nowadays. Account 12. What happened to Pedro Lopez? He is one of the most prolific serial killers in history and claims to have murdered over 350 women and girls. Since his release in 1998, his whereabouts are currently unknown. Account 13. The death of Rebecca Zahao has stuck with me. Zahao's nude body was found hanging from a balcony, with her wrists and ankles bound and hands behind her back. Her death was ruled a suicide. As if that wasn't strange enough, two days prior to her death, the six-year-old son of her boyfriend fell down a staircase and died. 
His death was ruled an accident. There's a lot to read about this case, and I highly recommend it if you're into true crime. Account 14. The case of Adam immediately came to mind. Unidentified male child whose torso was discovered in the River Thames in London, United Kingdom, on 21st September 2001, dubbed Adam, by police officers, the unidentified remains belonged to a black male, around four to eight years old, who had been wearing orange girls, shorts, the post. Mortem showed that Adam had been poisoned. His throat had been slit to drain the blood from his body, and his head and limbs had been expertly removed. Investigators believe the child was likely from southwestern Nigeria, and that several days before his murder, he was trafficked to the United Kingdom for a Muti ritual sacrifice. To date, nobody has been charged with Adam's murder and his true identity remains unknown. Account 15. The Cleveland Torso Murderer from 1935 to 1938 there was a serial killer who chopped off the heads and appendages of 12, 20 people and left their torsos for people to find. The famous detective Elliot Ness was on the case, and the killer taunted him by leaving two torsos within full view of his office. The killer was never identified, nor were the majority of the victims.